Hey everyone, uh, so for this video we're going to go into uh, post-production in Photoshop and kind of how you take an image from a Rhino render, a Maxwell render, a V-Ray render and do some post-production. So adding people, you know, um, editing the image itself, adding entourage, trees, etc. So what I have right here is I have a house that I've modeled uh, in Rhino. Um, that's a rendering that we're going to use and we're going to bring that into Photoshop and do some post-production. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Photoshop. Uh, if you look, this is the prompt that kind of comes up. Uh, this is a CS6 version, um, so your layout should be very similar to this. If you have CC, that's fine. It's going to be fairly similar. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break down essentially kind of what are the tools of Photoshop, uh, what you need to know in terms of the layout, and kind of where everything is um, in this program. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up an image, so File, New. And it's going to give us this prompt. It's going to pretty much tell us what do you want to name it, what size do you want it. So we're going to name this uh, Rhino Rendering Test. In terms of size, uh, pixels. If you're using, you know, if you're doing some online kind of work, uh, pixels will work. But for us, we're going to do inches. So for the width, we're going to do uh, 11 inches, and the height, we're going to do 8.5 by 11. In terms of resolution, um, printing resolution typically tops out at 150 DPI. Um, if you're doing online content, it's about 300 dpi. Um, since we're having a smaller size paper, we're going to go ahead and do 300 dpi, or 300 pixels per inch. And for the color, we're going to choose RGB. And I'll go into more detail why RGB is better than um, CMYK. Um, I suppose okay. So once we have this uh, page that came up, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pretty much break down what are these shortcuts on the right side of Photoshop. Um, the first thing you'll see is this, this bar right here, this ribbon window. And there's just a few kind of shortcut options. The first thing is the history. So in terms of if you have multiple um, commands that you're doing, you can actually go back and see, okay, well, where did I mess up or what, what history can I undo? And that, that lets you do that. Then you have more things like properties of the image, et cetera. Um, brush presets, if you want to change like the scattering or the, uh, the blurriness of the brush, the size, kind of um, how that works. Also, you have a lot of presets as well. And these two become very important if you have a drawing tablet, like a Wacom tablet. You can actually start to modify the tapering, so that way the more pressure you put on the tablet, the, the, the deeper um, or the larger that brush preset becomes. The other two options is a text, you know, a text editing option, so you can choose the spacing between your text, um, different types of things like that. And then you have a paragraph um, you know, preset, so if you want to justify things to the left or justify to the right, um, or justify uniformly, things like that. The next thing is this layers option and also the color swatches. Now in terms of colors, I typically just use this color where I can just kind of select what color I want. If you click on this, you'll actually get a more detailed color representation, so you can actually kind of go and pick out the color. The reason why I use RGB is because a lot of times when you find colors online, um, you'll have a R, G, and a B, the red, green, and the blue. So that way, if you're working on a project and if you have a color palette of, let's say, three colors, go ahead and write down these RGBs. So that way you don't lose it every time and you're not off by one or two shades, but you have the exact color every time you're working. And then you have swatches too, and you can always add a swatch, etc. The next thing is the layers. If you look right over here, the layers is going to be one of the most important things you use in Photoshop. So right now you'll realize that the image that we just added, it's actually locked. There's a locked image because we just opened up a blank page. So the first thing we'll do with any kind of Photoshop file is we're going to unlock this page. So we're going to double click and we'll name this, you know, background. Okay. And you realize that that lock is gone. So now we can actually start to modify our background, um, etc. This eyeball essentially lets you turn on and turn off that image. And then if you look at the bottom, you have more options. For example, if you want to add a new layer, you have this page icon. So create new layer. If you want to add a group, select the group. You know, you just drag your files and you place it under that group. So that way you can actually keep your layer uh, section very organized. And that's going to help in terms of when you do a very complicated rendering. If your layers are organized, it's going to be easy to edit it. Now going on to the left, we have some more options on the left. Um, you realize that there's many different commands. So the first thing is a selection command. So you can actually take this and start to move images. It's just a simple moving command. Then you have a selection kind of tool. So these are different types of selections. So this is a rectangular selection. So that means we can select a rectangular area and then we can actually color only in that area. And as soon as you select an area, you have to make sure to deselect. So we're gonna go back, right click and deselect. 
Another option is this polygon lasso tool. So this polygon lasso tool is important for you know selecting key areas. So let's say you have a more interesting shape. Uh, you can actually select that and then you can actually paint inside of it. If you right click, you'll realize you'll get some more options. Feathering, uh, feathering is if you want to have a blurry edge. Select inverse, things like that. So let's say we select inverse. So now it's going to select everything outside of that image. And of course, make sure to deselect. Then there's a magic wand tool. We're going to more detail once we start to Photoshop how this tool works. This is a very important tool in terms of just making your life easier and kind of selecting things faster. Then we have a crop, we have eyedropper, we have uh, swashes. Another important tool is the brush tool. So as soon as you click on a command over here, you'll see more options that'll come up on top. For example, different options about selection, different options about brushes, different op options about the eraser command. So for the brush, um, if you click right here, you can actually edit the size of your brush. You can edit the hardness, uh, what type of brushes you want to use. Do you want a blurry one or do you want a more solid one? These are the ones that I typically use. It's the basic brushes. And then I have some other ones that I use often or sometimes. If you want to load some more brushes, you can just right click and um, select these different types like natural brushes or uh, calligraphy style or anything like that. And then you have an opacity command too. So opacity is useful. Like um, It kind of gives you that Prismacolor Lamarcker effect. So for example, the more I stack on, the darker it gets. So it kind of gives that effect of like stacking on, you know, markers and how that might look. Um, but typically I just work at 100% opacity. And then we have other things like the eraser tools. It's similar in terms of, you know, what type of eraser do you want? Do you want a pencil or a block or a brush? I typically use brush. We have a gradient tool if you want to create a gradient. Uh, we have some tools for exact, uh, burning an edge, making it darker or mixing it with a sponge command. Uh, we have a text command, so just, you know, uh, text right here. And then you can, of course, justify it left, right, center, change the text color to a black, for example, if you want to curve that text. Um, so there's a lot of options. You can just pretty much play with any of these options in Photoshop. Uh, then we have a rectangle box tool, so if you want to create a box, uh, there's different options if you want to create a circle or if you want to create a rectangle. Um, once you do that, for example, you can change your fill. So you can have a solid fill. You can have a you know a black um, outline. Uh, let's see, you want it to be a larger outline. You want it to be a solid line. So that way, I would just recommend kind of playing with these. Now, when you're working with shapes, if you look at this right tool, you realize that there's actually a box around this. So that means it's a smart object. So that means that regardless of how many times you scale it, it's not going to lose any quality. But for example, if I right click and I rasterize this, now when I scale it small and then I scale it large again, you'll realize that I'm actually going to lose quality. It's going to become blurry. And that's one thing that's very important about Photoshop is that this program isn't vector based. It's, uh, it's mostly rasterized based. So if you're working with any images, make sure you don't scale those images down too small and then make them large again because you're going to lose image quality. So I highly recommend not doing that. And then we have more options on the top. Um, so we have simple editing options. Uh, for example, if you have one area selected, um, you can actually edit that. So you can actually um, go to edit, transform, and you can transform and scale it, things like that. Another command is if you do control T, you can rotate, you can start to scale. If you go to image, you can actually edit the image itself. So adjustments, you can edit the brightness, the contrast, so all of these will kind of show you those different options that you have. And in terms of Photoshop, you know, that's more or less it in terms of kind of the basics of how it works. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into rendering and actually take an image and do a lot of post-production with that.